Hello, this is Christian Okoye, former Kansas City Chiefs. You are listening to Brilliant Truth. Welcome to the Best Available Draft Podcast on the Grueling True Sports Network. The Best Available Draft Podcast is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. I'm your host, Mike Goodpasser. Right now, as always, I want to welcome in my co-host, Matt Minnick. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing very well. How are you? All right. And this is actually my favorite position to talk about, which is the offensive line, because it seems like there's fewer and fewer really good offensive linemen every year. But I think this year is a little bit better than the last few years. At least, hopefully, it is. Yeah, I mean, not only in the draft, but I think it, I think it caught up with the NFL faster than it caught up with the draft. Um, you look at there's a lot of teams uh, last year. You looked at their offensive line, and you're like, man, these th- this offensive line stinks. Um, and those teams, for the most part, didn't get too far. So, you know, definitely, uh, definitely a big area of need for a lot of teams. Yeah, and I still blame most of that on coaching and the fact that in college and even high school now, you see more and more teams going to the spread offense to try to negate having a good offensive line. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, when you're running that style of offense and when you're getting rid of the ball real quick, uh, you know, you're not developing those skills, especially at the tackle position, uh, you know, because they're not having to hold those blocks and hold off those edge defenders for very long. All right, we're going to start off talking about the tackles, and I think the first one we are going to talk about is going to be Mike McGlinchey from Notre Dame, who was a guy I wasn't real high on going into his senior year, but I think he did improve. He has good athleticism on the edge. Um, he's got good enough feet to handle feet, or good enough feet to handle a speed rusher on the outside. Um, good strength to sustain blocks. Um, I I think the other thing that stood out to me, McGlinchey, over these other guys, there's a couple that I think may be better pass blockers, but I think he's a really good run blocker, which is key if you want to run the ball, of course. What's your take on McGlinchey? Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think he's best uh, as a run blocker, Um, you know, and and not to oversimplify it because I don't think – I don't subscribe to uh, to the fact that there's that much of a difference between a left tackle and a right tackle. Uh, but you know, he strikes me as more of the right tackle type. He's more of the, more of the people move. We're going to get guys going, uh, and, you know, very good in the run game and he's strong enough that, uh, even if he, even if he gets kind of thrown off, he can reset his body. He can come back. Uh, and he really dominates in the run game. Uh, and he, and he does it in line, but they also kicked him out. Uh, got him on the edge a lot, got him, uh, moving up in space. He's, He's athletic. He can track backers. He can, he can get on those guys. He doesn't get lost in space. Like uh, even a lot of a lot of the uh, more athletic interior linemen that we talk about have that problem. Uh, he really doesn't have that though. Um, I, I think he's uh, obviously you look at the size, um, and and that that is what blows you away, and that's what really projects him as a left tackle. I think, and, and why people you know really get behind the idea that he can do that. Um, but he's he's not great in pass pro. He's not a great athlete moving in that direction. Uh, so I, I I'm a little concerned about what his ceiling is uh, as a uh, you know as a true uh, left tackle. Uh, but he's good enough. You know he's good enough that he's going to contribute for somebody. He's going to be helping out in the run game. Uh, and I don't know if he's a uh, if it's enough to, to push him to be in the type of guy that people should be taking as a top 10 to, or should be considered as a top 10 player. Um, but I think he has a really high floor uh, and he's, he's a very safe prospect. Yeah. The, the only two drawbacks I saw with him when watching film was the game against Miami. He played sophomore defensive end, Joe Jackson had some issues against him and then the other thing I noticed in games, in a few games at least, it seemed like in tight games he would get tired. And it seemed like most of his penalties, especially the false starts, were late in the game. So that worries me a little bit also. 
Yeah, you, you know, I mean, when you're six seven, uh, just getting into a into a stance, you know, sixty seventy times is going to kind of wear you out over the course of things. Uh, you know, definitely something to be to be concerned about how we how he's wearing down. Uh, and I, but I, I think he's he seemed to be like that he was in pretty good shape, but you know, maybe just the kind of the course of things over time was uh, kind of more mentally draining him than anything. Um, All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely think he can he can contribute. Next up, we're going to go to Orlando Brown, which for looking at a lot of play, people rank him like second or third, and he's a strong run blocker at the point of attack. But I watched him, especially in their playoff game where they got beat, and to me, his feet are terrible. And everybody freaks out about the twelve, fourteen, whatever he lifted two twenty five at. That doesn't scare me as much as his lack of foot speed and his inability to move. Yeah, and I mean, you watch him, and uh, you know, watch him. As soon as you put on his tape, it, it's he looks like he's out of shape. He looks like he's not very athletic. You know, it, it's like watching high school film where they've just got one huge kid that does whatever he wants, <laughs> and nobody can really do anything about it. Um, and you know, really, and and, and I'll, you know, I'll come on and say it. Before the combine, he was my seventh ranked off at the tackle. Uh, you know, I, I I think he's he's obviously got that elite size, but he, he looks like he's in terrible shape. He's not good uh, against pass rushers with any kind of skill. Um, you know, he can he can eat them up if, if they don't have the ability to get off him. Uh, you know, to extend their arms and. You know, he, he, he can he can he can eat him up and and, and soak him up, but and we get him against NFL talent, he's not going to be able to stop those guys. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what I see. Yeah, a I lot see. of a lot of limits a, a, athletically for him. Yeah, real quick, Matt, I, I think your only hope to turn him into not a bust would be to put him at guard. I mean, I think that's probably the the, the best case scenario for him, uh, at least early on. Uh, you know, I I look at him and I think. I think he, he probably should be paying, playing at least 20 pounds lighter, you know, and, and maybe if he can come into, into, uh, into camp, you know, maybe even year two or something, if he, if he can come in like under 320, uh, you know, that might be something where he's in a better position, but yeah, you know, I think, I, I think left tackle is not going to happen for him uh, anytime soon. And, and yeah, I, I think he's better uh, as a run blocker uh, and would probably do better inside. I definitely agree with that. All right, a guy that's interesting to me is Colton Miller. He's an offensive tackle at UCLA. And, I mean, he's got good quickness, good athleticism, had a rough start to the season. Um, the thing that stood out to me with him was not his ability to beat his, to block a speed rusher to his outside. It was his inability to beat a speed rusher to his inside, which tells me that there's got to be some kind of a foot problem there where his leverage is not really good enough to go back and forth. So I, I think he needs a lot of work technique-wise. But he's a guy I would take a chance on before Orlando Brown. Yeah, definitely. And he's another he's another really uh, sized guy. You know, you, you look at him and he's, you know, he's a giant. He's, he's only about 300 pounds, though. Uh, is that but, all? You know, just coming in at, uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, he's coming in about uh, you know uh, somewhere in the six seven six 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 range, I believe. Though, um, you know, he's a converted tight end, so he's got some uh, good athletic ability to him. Uh, but he didn't seem like he wants to block a lot of the times to me. Um, and I think that's probably I think that's part of the problem with the inside. He's real comfortable letting rushers run around him because he realizes he's big enough. He can let them go around, do a little Ole move, and they're gonna they're gonna fly right by. Um, and and you know I think he's way too comfortable with that. I wonder, you know, if he really has the true demeanor that you want out of that position. Yeah, and I think this is a position where you want somebody that's pissed off and angry at the world. That brings us to Connor mm-hmm. Williams. Connor Williams is a guy that I think has to be a guard. I don't think his lo- arms are long enough. Number one. Um, I, I really, to put it bluntly, I just don't think he's very good. I, I would still take him over Orlando Brown, but Connor Williams is a guy to me that should be a third round pick at best. What's your take on Williams? I actually like Williams. I, I think of the group, uh, of that, those guys that I talked about in the top group, I think he has the best chance 
to be uh, a left tackle. You know, I, I, I think he's got the best uh, technique in terms of, uh, of, of a uh, pass blocking. Um, I think he does a pretty good job with that stuff. He's, he's, he's a little on the short side, uh, but his arms are a little bit longer than they should be for, for his size. I think he, he meets, he meets the category. You know, he's not the elite guy that you want. He didn't have that elite size, uh, but he has enough size uh, to do an okay job there. So I, I, I feel pretty good about, uh, about him again, I don't know if I want to take a, a very high pick on him because there is a little bit of risk there because he doesn't have that elite size. Uh, but I, I think he's a good a good run blocker. He definitely could move inside. Uh, so that's kind of the the, the catch twenty two with it is if he's not successful there, you try him out of guard or you try him out of tackle because that's that's the elite position. That's the position that's uh, that's the most valued. And if that doesn't work out, I, I definitely think he can move inside and have some success. Yeah, because really, to me, I, I don't think there's an offensive tackle worth a top 15 or 20 pick in this draft. I think the guards are significantly better. I think there's a couple centers that could go before these guys. And to me, the only guy I would be comfortable taking in the first round, and that would be after pick 20, would be Mike McGlinchey. Yeah, I you know I, I think Williams and McGlinchey could probably justify in the in the top 20, but not not very far into the top twenty, you know. I, you know, I think right around there, you got teams like uh, like Baltimore and San Diego in the late teens there that that have a need at the position. I, I could see I could see those two going to to those couple of spots, but uh, especially McGlinchey with his size, uh, gives you gives you a high upside, gives you a good feeling about it anyway. Uh, I could definitely see him going there, but yeah, Williams could definitely slip a little farther. You know, maybe maybe into the twenties. Uh, you know, Dallas might be looking to upgrade Cincinnati as well. Uh, yeah, I could definitely see both those guys slipping a little bit, though. All right. Do you have any other tackles you want to bring up that you think might be worth noticing? Yeah. Uh, one guy I really like uh, is uh, Desmond Harrison out of West Georgia. Uh, you know, small school guy, uh, but he's got uh, he's got the attitude. Uh, and that's one thing I noticed on his film Uh he finishes plays, you know, people talk about finishing, uh, you know, how important is that really to an offensive offensive lineman? But I think that's part of what shows that demeanor uh, and, and that you have the, the attitude to, to be a jerk out there and to kind of let the defense know that you're, you're not going away. They're going to be dealing with you all day. Uh, he's a six, six, uh, 295 pound guy. So, you know, he's got a, he's got a big frame. Um, and, and he's got that attitude that I think he could, he could really develop. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't see him obviously the first rounder, uh, you know, big projection coming from D2 and, you know, you don't know how strong and, and big those guys that he was going up against are. Uh, but I, I think he could definitely, uh, definitely be a guy who, who could uh, develop into uh, a, a real, real big time guy in the NFL. Yeah, I agree with you. He'd be in my top three here if it wasn't for one glaring thing. And that was his time at Texas where he failed multiple drug tests under Charlie Strong, who basically dismissed him from or dismissed him from the team, so there tells you that third or fourth round he'll probably be a Bengal. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say. I mean, yeah, he, he definitely fits into that category, and you know, he's one of those guys that uh, you, you could get a steal on, you know, for that for that very reason. But um, uh, you know, guys guys fall for one reason or another. That's you, you, when you see a guy with that type of uh, elite size at a division school, you know there's got to be a reason he fell there. You know, you know he screwed something up in his life. Yeah. All right, we move to guard. Now, the guard is where I think this gets good. I think the guard and centers are a few deep with guys that could really start right away. Um, Quentin Nelson is the first guy I'll bring up. And to me, I think he's the most polished, offensive lineman I've seen in a long time in the NFL or in the NFL draft. And I, I think he's one of the top three players in this draft, Matt. Yeah. I mean, he, he's got everything you look for, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's athletic enough to pull around, uh, you know, big, strong guy can get people moving, uh, excellent feet and pass protection as well. Um, you know, so he, he, he does a great job and he's got that, he's got that, uh, demeanor that, that he does finish those blocks like we talk about uh some of these guys don't really do that some of these guys have this uh hey I, this thing in their head like they've been a big guy their whole life and they're afraid of hurting people uh you know he he, he didn't he didn't have that um 
he does. He, he he leans a bit too much on blocks. Uh, you know, so I worry a little bit about uh, you know more skilled defenders at the NFL level being able to kind of lay him a little bit uh, and and get off of him. Um, so, you know, that's not a major thing. That's kind of something that can be cleaned up. Um, he's definitely a day one starter, and he's a guy that's uh, that, that should have a major uh, major impact as a rookie. All right, the next guy I want to bring up is I think he's the second best guard. But overall, value-wise, this guy might be the best one because I think he could play guard, center. I think get a crunch, he could, he could play offensive tackle. And that's from Georgia, Isaiah Wynn. Uh, when you look at Wynn, he's a guy that blocks with the aggression and the temperament that's hard to find in college blockers. Uh, pass protection, he's dependable. He can run block. He can do it all, and I think he's going to have a long, successful career in the NFL. Yeah, you know, he played left tackle at Georgia. Um, he really – he did a lot of things for him. You know, it, 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 he was doing reach blocks, uh, you know, getting the, uh, them to the edge, uh, but he's also down blocking on guys. Uh, he gets up to the second level, gets up to linebackers. Uh, so he, they really used him in a lot of different ways in the run game, which shows you that he can project very well to guard. Uh, I think a lot of times you get into some of these zone schemes, uh, off of the tackles in, in college, you know they might not be doing much more than uh, than just blocking head up basically on on the defensive end. Sometimes we'll come to a linebacker, uh, but Wynn's been a little bit more versatile. He's done a lot more in his career, so that makes it a little bit easier to project him to guard. I look at him just the same way as I look at Williams, though. I mean, I, I think if you have a need uh, at offensive tackle, you draft Wynn and you play him at offensive tackle. Uh, and if it doesn't work out, then you move him to guard. You know, you you, you kind of you cross train him and right away you're, you're teaching. Uh, you, you can you can look at it a couple of different ways. That I think I think when you when you have a tackle and he's a sure tackle, you teach him left and you teach him right. Um, you know, unless he's a big guy at left tackle. Uh, and with Win, I think he's a guy that you bring in and and you teach him one side of the line. You know, you say, hey, hey, you're gonna play some right guard. You're gonna play some right tackle. We're gonna figure out where we can get the most value out of out of, out of uh, you. You know, he lacks that ideal height. Um, you know, he's got a little bit shorter arms than, than, uh, than with Williams. Uh, but he's, he's shown he can do it. He's shown he can do it in the, in the SEC. I say, give him a chance. And, you know, worst case scenario, you kick him into guard. And he's, he's got some good experience, uh, at the NFL level, then playing tackle, uh, where you know that in a pinch, you can throw him out there. All right. Next up, we got a guy that I like at least a little bit. I'm still not convinced on his pass blocking, but Will Hernandez, who I think is a very strong guy. He impressed everybody. If he's 40 time, I don't care about that. When I watch him, he, he is a very good run blocker, routinely pushing defenders out of their gaps, uh, strong at the point of the attack. But I think he needs work on his pass protection in the NFL. But I think this is a guy in the right situation could go in and start right away. Yeah, you know, and I think he will. I think he'll get a chance to start right away. Um, yeah. You know, I like his feet. Uh, I definitely like his strength, but I think he's he lacks great technique, and he kind of tends to tire down as the play goes on. He'll get higher, his feet will get wider, um, so he doesn't necessarily always always bury every every opponent because his, his technique uh, does get a little bit rough. Um, you know, a little bit a little bit scheme def- dependent that he might be uh, a better uh, better in a down scheme, a you know, t- team that's running counters and. Uh, and power plays and things along those lines than it would be in a true zone scheme, uh, just with where he's at athletically. But he's a big, strong guy. Just needs to learn how to how to bend his knees and and stick to his technique a little better. And uh, you know, he should be should be a solid player year one. All right, our next guy up, Braden Smith from Auburn. Um, I bring him up because he impressed with a bench press of 35 reps. So I hadn't really paid attention to him. I saw that and I think, well, I'm going to go watch the film. I watched the film, and he's a good player. But the thing that stuck out to me is I don't think he plays near as strong as those 35 reps. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely see him getting kicked around a little bit. And, and he's a guy that was kind of mentioned among some of these top guys and was mentioned you know, higher than Hernandez uh, before the, the whole pre-draft process started. Uh, but a guy who really doesn't – doesn't wow me on film, you know, it, 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 I, I, I watch him and I, I think, yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's a pretty, uh, you know, pretty average all around guy, decent athlete, 
doesn't play that, that that strong, as you said. Doesn't really seem to get a lot of major push down the field on guys, though. All right, so any other guards here that stand out to you? Uh, one guy that, that interests me, uh, a little bit lower, a little bit of a, of a deep cut, is uh, Skylar Phillips from Idaho State. Um, I, I see him as being very similar to Will Hernandez, but he's a guy that you're going to get a lot better value on. You're probably – uh, you know, he's probably going to be a guy you're going to see go probably in the early parts of, of Saturday in the draft. Uh, but that's a, I mean, that's a great value. You're getting the guy in the fourth round, uh, likely that I think could probably come in uh, and and uh, spell some guys early on uh, in year one. Uh, another another big guy, strong run blocker. Um, you know, decent uh, against the pass, uh, but you know he's really uh, you know really getting uh, push and moving guys down the field in the, uh, in the run game, um, not playing at the highest level of competition, obviously. Uh, and, that, and that's part of why he's going to slip, uh, has some technique issues that, that definitely need to be fixed. Uh, but I, I, I think he projects very well. And I think he could be uh, could be a pretty good sleeper at that position. All right. My sleeper would be from Virginia, Virginia tech, Wyatt Teller. What's your take on him? Because when I see him, I think he had a really strong senior season from the three or four games that I saw and then, of course, the highlight films. But I, I think his ability to create movement in a run game, I really like that. And I, I think Wyatt Teller could be a guy that surprises some people. Yeah, Wyatt Teller definitely gets him, get, gets him push. Uh, you know, again, much like, much like Braden, wasn't a guy that, that really stood out to me as, as doing anything uh, specifically great. And also just a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit light. Uh, again, a guy that can work uh, probably pretty well. We're kind of going the opposite way here, but he's a guy that I think can work pretty well in the, in the zone uh, system because he, he, you know, he can move all right. He, he, he's uh, pretty long and lean, uh, and that's kind of how those guys like it, like the old school uh, Denver Broncos lineman. Um, but I, I think he's going to be a little bit limited limited to that. I, I don't see. Uh, I don't see it. Uh, I see some good movement, but I don't see like a ton of ton of strength out of him. And uh, you know, I don't know how well he he'd do in a down system. All right, now we're going to switch to center and a guy that I really like that I would like to see the Cincinnati Bengals, my team pick, and that's Billy Price from Ohio State. Um, I hate to talk well about an Ohio State player since I'm on here with an Ohio State fan. But you saw him more than I did. I mean, what's your take on him? Because the thing that stood out to me was his ability to move in space. And then on top of that, though, was his ability to handle massive nose tackles, which in the NFL, you know you're going to have to be doing. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a really strong run blocker. Uh, and he fights. You know, and he gets in there. Uh, he's not going to quit on plays. Uh, he's, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna finish guys. He's gonna be using, using his hands, milking to bury those guys all the time. He's really got that, uh, got that attitude to him. Um, you know, to make a comp, he's not as, he's not as good as this guy. I'm not saying he's going to be this guy in the NFL, but there's another Ohio state, uh, player that, he, uh, that he played similar to. And that's, that's Nick Mangold, uh, just kind of in his style of play. And that's one thing that, that, that attracts me is I think if you got that type of demeanor, on top of you know certain other um, you know certain other areas that you have to be at least a certain have at least a certain amount of strength in, uh, you, you're going to have some success in the NFL. So I don't think there's any chance that he's going to be a huge bust uh, because he's going to he's going to fight. Uh, you know, even if he's uh, uh, even if he's got some limitations, even if he's struggling in some areas, I think he, he, he's going to fight and he's going to make himself into a pretty good player. Uh, does have some issues in the past game, uh, particularly when there's movement in front of him. You know, he can kind of get his, his feet stuck in the mud and give some things up. Uh, but, I mean, we're talking about a center here. Uh, you know, we're not talking about a tackle. Plus, Matt, uh, let's until, face it, we haven't seen a football game with mud in a decade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, pardon my expression. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, he, 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 he's definitely uh, a guy that should come in and start and can do some things. I think we get a little bit crazy about him, though. Um, because he's not as good, uh, as, uh, as Elfline, uh, from what I'll say last year, uh, you know, I, 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 he's got a greenness to him. He's got that fight to him, 
but I, I don't think he's as good as Elfline was. And Elfline went much later in the draft. So I think people talking about him going in the first round, I think that is absolutely crazy. Um, in the second round, you know, if you got the need and you say, hey, this guy's going to come in and start for us, you can justify it. But, um, but you know, really you know, looking at the at the value of the position, um, you know, I don't, I don't I don't see any of these centers going in the first round. All right, not even to the Bengals who haven't had a center in like twenty years. <laughs> I think I think I think they'll find it in round two. I, I can tell you this: <laughs> if you told me they were going to take Billy Price with the twenty first, twenty second pick, whatever they got, I would take it just because I've watched Russell Bodine for a couple of years. <laughs> well, you're not going to have to watch them this year. <laughs> no, but as of right now, there's no because we, there, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't want T.J. Johnson either, though. So <laughs> no, I'd like to see him try to move Christian West or Westerman to play there. Yeah, I mean, you know, they've got a couple of young guards that uh, could fill in a pinch. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that to fill in a pinch. Hopefully, they're going out and finding. Uh, I, you know, what? Uh, not to turn this into a Bengals podcast, but I'd love to see him get win in the first and uh, and and move on to center in the second. Yeah, win in the first, price in the second. I'd be fine with that. I'll also be fine with oh, the in the first and win in the second or whatever. Uh, yeah, with works. the linemen, you never know because people get jumpy on quarterbacks and wide receivers and everything. You could have a bunch drop. Uh, another guy mm-hmm. I've seen where people are projecting possibly in the first round is James Daniels from Iowa. Um, doesn't have great size, but he is very strong. Um, uh, I think a lot like price, he's going to need a little bit of coaching, which there's another good thing if he comes to the Bengals because the bad coach is gone. Hopefully we got a good one now. Uh, his ability to get movement at the point of attack, I think is good. Sustain him blocks. What's your take on Daniels? Daniels is a guy that w- when I started looking at, uh, at offensive linemen in this draft, he wasn't really being talked about much. It was pre pre combine, obviously. Um, and I remember seeing him thinking, wow, this guy's pretty good. Um, and I, and, and uh, you know, I, I kind of ranked him a little higher than a lot of people were at the time. Uh, then he goes to the combine, puts up some, some decent athletic numbers, and all of a sudden people are going crazy about him. Um, again, I see this guy as somebody that can, that can play. I see him as maybe a day one starter. Uh, you know, and I see him as a guy that can definitely develop into a really good player in the NFL. I think James Daniels as a first round pick is absolutely insane. Uh, yes, but we're talking about the NFL. This is a league where people traded to get Tim Tebow in the first round and Johnny Manziel. Well, I mean, at least they didn't play center. You know, <laughs> they would have probably but, uh... performed just as well as they did at quarterback. <laughs> yeah, no kid, no kid. But I mean, I mean, you know, I think Daniels is good. He's got some good athleticism, uh, but he he gets overpowered. He, I think he could have definitely afford to add some bulk to get a little stronger. Um, and I, I see him get up to have the athleticism to get up to the second level. Uh, but then he just misses guys. Uh, like he doesn't have he, he has doesn't have the the type of athleticism to really control his body uh, and and get on a man in space. Uh, you know, black like a receiver, basically. Um, and he spends too much time on the ground, too. You know, and I, and I think that Billy Price, you can, make the, you can make the same argument that Billy Price spends too much time on the ground, and he does. Uh, but when Billy Price is on the ground, I feel like it's because he was over-aggressive in something, and he put himself down. Yeah. Uh, when James Daniels is on the ground, I feel like, you know, it, it's because he's been out, outpowered or because uh, he's put himself in a bad uh, body position. Uh, I don't feel like it's an over-aggression thing with him. All right. Here, here's a guy that's interesting to me. When you look at it 2017, he looked like he may come out as the best center in this draft. And that's Frank Ragnew from Arkansas. He can also play guard. Played well in 2017 before a high ankle sprain ended the, or ended the season. Um, what's your take on Ragnew? I think he is the top center in this draft, personally. Um, again, I, I don't think he's worth a second round or worth, worth a first round pick, uh, but I, I think he's the top guy. Um, and when I look at it, and you put those three together, uh, and that's one of the one of the reasons why I think you you can wait, even if you have a desperate need at center, you can wait to the second round um, because even if you're even if you're the Philadelphia Eagles. Not that they want a center, but even if you even if you're picking at the end of the second round, 
what are the odds that three people are going to take centers, you know, in that, in that time frame? Yeah. Uh, you only, you only start one. So you're not drafting the guy to, to, to not look to start, uh, you know, quickly in the, in the first, uh, in the first two rounds. I, I think, I think right now is a really good player. Uh, does a great job in pass protection, you know, strong on the run. He is excellent uh, at coming off of double teams. He just seems to really have a knack uh, for knowing exactly when to uh, come off and work up to the next level. Um, so, I mean, I, I think he's a, he's a solid player. Um, and, and, you know, personally, I think he has a shorter distance to go uh, to, be a, to be a good, solid NFL starter. Yeah, because uh, also I do. think that he would make just as good a guard as he would a center. Yeah, and he and he uh, he did play guard early uh, early in his career. I want to say maybe it was his sophomore year. Uh, so he's you know he, he he's played some guard. You know he can definitely do that in a pinch, um, and you know much like much like Price had, had done that at Ohio State as well. But uh, yeah, I mean he he's he's a big strong guy. Has some of the limitations that the other guys have that you know he'll get a, get a little bit high. He's a little bit of a limited athlete, uh, but. He, he's a solid player. And the other thing I'd like to point out about him, um, so he, he went, he played for Arkansas. Uh, you know, he was playing for uh, Brett Bielema, uh originally, uh, recruit, recruited by him. He's out of Chain House in Minnesota. Um, so when you look at him, you want to link him in with that Wisconsin heritage of offensive line play because that's the system he came into. That's the coach that he came into with. And geographically, you know, he's the same, he's the same guy, you know, he, he's coming, uh, coming from a Minnesota uh, high school. Uh, so I think he, he, lump, you can lump him in with your, uh, you know, either Joe Thomas with your uh, Kevin Zeitlers uh, as, as being one of those guys who we've seen have some uh, good success at the NFL level. All right. Anybody else you want to bring up? Um, you know, not really the center position. There's one guy I was, I was forgetting about over, uh, at, at the guard position, though, uh, and that's uh, Pat Corbett uh, out of uh, Nevada. And he, he's another one of these guys that's just a little bit on the short side uh, but was playing tackle uh, at Nevada and, and did, it, did a real good job, uses his hands real well, was excellent in pass protection. Uh, but as the strength to move inside, you know, being 6'4", uh, is being projected in that way. Uh, so – I think he's a guy that, that uh, he's, he's moved up quite a few draft boards uh, pretty quickly, and he could be a real solid pick for somebody in the second day of the draft. All right, Matt. Um, what position are we going with next Thursday? Uh, we got we got defensive backs. So the uh, my, just uh, just put out my top ten safeties. Uh, so that's that's coming out in the next couple of days here. Uh, so we'll be talking about corners and safeties. All right, and you can catch me and Matt every Thursday night leading up to the draft, which we will have a live NFL draft show. Hopefully Matt's going to join us there. Um, Go to iTunes. You can download our app to get all of our shows. Um, You can hear us on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find The Grueling Truth. So for Matt Minnick, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.